Hi, I'm David Soren. I'm the director of Captain Underpants. I had just moved to LA. I was in a bookstore. I happened to stumble across the very first Captain Underpants book on the shelf. Pulled it out, started reading about half of it right there in the aisle, and I just couldn't put it down. I thought it was so great, and I thought, oh, I wish I came up with this idea. Uh, so, if, if, you know, when DreamWorks came and approached me about directing it, I was just like, I'm all in. Let's do it. The goal that we all had on the movie was to stay true to the spirit of what Dave Pilkey had done in the books. You know, he gave us permission to, to bring something new to the table and also felt very confident that we were capturing the spirit of what he was doing based on what he saw. So he, he kind of gave us the greatest compliment a writer creator could have given us. He trusted us to make the movie. We mined primarily the first four books of the series. Um, no one book on its own felt like it had enough meat on the bone to really make an entire film out of, but there were so many aspects of different ones that we felt like we could use and, and then kind of uh, create a, a story that would sustain the length of a feature around a lot of those different aspects. It was great because whenever we got uh, stuck for ideas, we could just kind of rifle through the books, say, what did Dave Pilkey do? And inevitably, the answer was sort of right there on the page, and we just had to kind of adjust things for our needs of the story. Captain Underpants, even though it's called Captain Underpants, is actually about the two boys who create him, George and Harold. Uh, they're wildly imaginative best friends who hypnotize their mean school principal and turn him into Captain Underpants, their comic book creation. who Strips off all of his clothes, puts his cape on, uh, and darts around the city thinking he's Earth's greatest crime fighter, and yet he has no actual superpowers, like none, no powers. <laughs> so George and Harold are best friends. They've been best friends since kindergarten. They're next door neighbors. They have a treehouse in between the two homes that's their home base and the headquarters of Treehouse Comics, Inc. This is where these two really creative kids make their comic books, the most famous one being Captain Underpants. And the treehouse is like their escape from the, from the misery of their school, Jerome Horowitz Elementary, which is ruled by this tyrannical, horrible principal, Mr. Krupp, who's turned this place into like this drone-like beehive. And, uh, and their, their escape from all this is really their creativity. The movie is ultimately a test of their friendship, a test of uh, all the obstacles that come in their way, and ultimately their creativity and the power of their friendship wins over. We struck gold with this cast. It was really, um, I mean, just, just in general, they, they all come with such a great gift of, of uh, sketch comedy backgrounds, stand-up backgrounds, and writing backgrounds. So uh, more than ever, certainly than I've seen at the studio, we, we, I use them primarily in these recording sessions, almost like workshops, you know? It was clear to me that, like, if... if uh, it would be a wasted opportunity not to rope them into the creative process and really have them help create their characters and develop them kind of from the inside out. So that made a huge difference. All of them were incredibly invested in the movie and their characters. Ed Helms, who had the extra hard responsibility of voicing two characters in the movie, Principal Krupp and Captain Underpants. So the biggest challenge Ed had was trying to create enough contrast between those two characters while uh, obviously it still being his voice, uh, but taking on two very different personalities. What I'm most impressed with with what Ed has done with Principal Krupp is he's made this really hateable character delightful to hate. You know, he, you just love... To, to, to loathe him. And then with Captain Underpants, he just he f just flew with the sheer stupidity of that character and <laughs> came up with just the most absurd, dumb lines that he could say. And Ed just, he nailed it. Kevin Hart voices George Beard. We were lucky enough to cast Kevin Hart pretty early on. He brought uh, so much warmth to the character of George you know, I expected the comedy from him, which he delivered 100%, but the warmth that he brought to that character really is what anchors the movie and, and makes it work.
Thomas Middleditch, I think, just was the perfect casting for Harold. He, he seemed to know exactly how to tap into Harold's insecurities, um, his desire to kind of keep up with George, who was a little more boisterous, a little more extroverted, but not really knowing how to do that. For example, there's a moment in the movie where George is showing off some of his comic books, like the fantastic Wicked Wedgie Woman, and Harold gets in there super gung-ho and starts pitching on this comic they did called Sad Worm. And he turns the pages and realizes he jumped in, but it wasn't one of their best comics. In fact, it was probably a work they abandoned at some point <laughs> along the way and gets self-conscious. And then George jumps in and bails him out and talks about the best comic book they've ever created, Captain Underpants. Uh, Nick came up with the accent for Professor Poopy Pants. That is all Kroll. He, he was sort of a force of nature on this movie. Um, that, that character that he created out of Professor Poopy Pants is like one of my favorites in the movie. Uh, one of the things Nick does with Professor Poopy Pants that I, I adore is when he's lying, uh, when Professor Poopy Pants is lying and trying to make himself seem like a good guy, Instead of getting kind of stiff or awkward about it, he actually gets super casual, you know? It's just chill, man. I'm not, like, I'm not lying. I'm not an evil guy or anything, you know? And he, uh, he kind of went in a completely unexpected way with him, uh, which makes it super fun when he turns on a dime and gets crazy. Kristen Schaal provided the voice for Edith. She knocked it out of the park. She just brought the weirdest strangest basement dwelling cafeteria lady to life and made you just root for her. Melvin Sneedley is voiced by Jordan Peele. Jordan did a fantastic job creating this just really horribly annoying character named Melvin. 